Hello, this is from Cyberdark LLC. Today I'm going to show you how to do the ribbon cable replacement for the new model of iPad 2. So this is an iPad 2 that was sending without the ribbon cable and pretty much everything else. So my job and goal for today is to repair it by putting a new ribbon cable on to the board. So first we want to make sure this board is still there, it's still good. It's not damaged and you can take your parts out. This is the camera. Move it out. There we go. And get help with a pick. And just get all the parts out. Get the camera out of the way. It's in the way. Okay. Let me show you a better view. This is where the power button goes in. Since I didn't originally take this iPad apart, I'm not quite sure how this power button could fit. So you just have to, if that's the situation you are in, you just have to have patience and try to match the right side. Um, close. Not quite right. Okay, this seems to be the right orientation. Quite 
quite a bit of screws here. Put all these buttons in. Okay. I can ignore all, all these other parts because um, they're mostly for cameras. These parts. Oh. Just focus on these two. And the ribbon cable. That's good. And place it in like this. That was the first time I do this model by the way, so bear with me. Um Yeah, but I think this is pretty much straightforward, I hope. I really wish I get to do the disassembly of this before the real assembly, but oh well. Get what I got. There we go, got it. Now I just pick the right screws. That looks about right. Get two short ones. And this is short. So remember when you do these screws you want to make it too tight otherwise the button will be rigid and it will not be loose. 
pens you can press it down and always check before you um, further down screw in the button you need to make sure that it clicks get that click click okay okay And you can really position this ribbon cable however you like. Um, there's no specific orientation that's actually pretty easier. Uh, well, the important thing is to get it out of the way of the camera FPC connector and the other FPC connector for the ribbon cable itself. So it doesn't block it. I figure out how this is taped. Um, I think this is it. Yep, that's it. It's pretty straightforward actually, it's not that... Uh, well, it's pretty complicated if you don't... Like, I'm, like me in this situation, you are putting it back without knowing how it was taken apart in the first place. But, it's kind of like a puzzle. Can be done. Hmm. I figure out how this thing go. Hmm. Goes here. Uh, there we go. That's complicated. Oh, I might have put it in the wrong side, maybe? No, uh, the right side. Technical difficulty. Uh, battery on the camera is about to run out, so I have to charge it. Alright, coming back. Sounds like okay. figured that out. It really help if you're not recording this at the same time and having, I guess, a magnified glass. It's actually not that bad. It's just really small and hard to see. Okay. Get the buttons in position. Uh, make sure the tape tape's down in the correct orientation. Good. Alright, that goes in nicely. And you flip this. Very good. Take this out. Flip this. Take that down. Um, it's up to you if you want to take this down some other way. 
So this has to go here, one way to go down there. So this is a backflip switch. I prefer to use fingers, because you can you get the tactile sensation, you can actually feel the fingers. But before I, I plug in and seal it and all that stuff, uh, you want to screw it down. These screws. So the um, buttons are in place. And when you do that, don't damage the ribbon cable of the screw. Otherwise, all this is wasted. Alright, so that screw's in. Seems to be okay. I think these two are the long screws. By the way. These two top ones. Okay. Now check your home hole buttons working, in this case it is. So you can screw down a little bit more just to secure it. There's another piece of some not having it here. I think something to cover the top. I don't think the customer sent it in with. But I'm sure that's fine. Let me make sure this thing is in. And very important, you need to make sure the volume button to work. Okay, so everything is almost done. Um, seems to be another long screw, more semi-long screw. I'm gonna put it here. I don't think this is too deep. Yeah, it's not. All right, wrong screw. That screw is too long. Use a smaller, smaller screw on the third one. Mm, that's why I have a too wide an opening, I don't think I'm gonna lo like that. Let me try... Be too wide open. Yeah, it's not a high school. Yeah, pretty sure it's a smaller size. Last school. He's a little too big. Too big. Mm, it's like a fun one. This one might work. Okay, perfect. Again, keep these screws relatively loose. You don't want it too tight, otherwise the volume button is not going to work for you. But you also don't want it too loose, otherwise you're going to get too many clicks. So we need to just find the right balance. Make sure the power button works. Make sure the whole button slides. This whole button slides a little bit funny. I'm pretty sure there's something to cover here. But it's not included here, so I can't really do much about that. Alright, so now the hard part um, is done. Right now I'm just gonna put all the camera back together. Try not to touch this camera's lens, which is kind of hard because it's really small anyway. It's hard to touch it. And I'm gonna put this back. But don't touch it. Anyways. Uh, get... Clean out your work field. Get rid of gunk that you don't need. Do not break the stuff that's on the board. Uh, there's a lot of capacitors and filters on the board. Align the camera correctly. It's also going to be a little tricky with this ribbon cable in the way. Um, okay, I got it. Got it, got it, got it. And just need to feel seriously feel with your finger where the camera FTC connector is got and press down when it's appropriate okay so I'm gonna do this so 
So we how to do this. There we go. And you can hear it click when that's done. A click. Okay, so that wasn't so bad. Pretty bad. Um, Alright, let's try these screws that was included in the repair. I don't think they're the right screw for the job. I don't know why they were included. Um, yeah, they're not. They're too big. These, I think, are simply screws for the um, LCD screen. Not sure why they were included by accident, perhaps. Uh, I'm gonna look for spare screws. Maybe I have walking, laying around somewhere on the work table. I found two. There we go. That worked just fine. Don't screw it too tight. You don't want to damage anything by doing that. So Apple uses a lot of generic screws in their devices, like generic sizes. They are pretty much interchangeable for the most part. Get this ribbon cable done. I don't really have to do this step, like get the sticky on. Since I have it, I might as well use it. Get the sticky. Real high. So there has to be a better way to hold the hold button. I'm not sure. Doesn't seem to be it. And that's it. The last step, really. Um. Just to put this ribbon cable, this one, that I've been having so much, spent so much work putting it on, and slide it in, gently, that's it, you want to do it perpendicularly, in parallel, actually I mean in parallel, not perpendicularly, um, to the connector, and flick the back switch, again I like to use my fingernail, simply because Due to, well it's my fingernail, part of my finger, I have the tactile sensation of how much pressure I'm putting on it. So, I won't break it. Um, I don't like to have this connector, a ribbon cable dangling in air. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is I'm gonna tape it down. With just like, any tape, really, that I prefer to use not these tape, so it's the Scott tape, they are easy to peel, so if for any, any reason I'm gonna need to rearrange that tape, I can, because they can come out quite easily. And in this case, I think I'm gonna tape down the hot button, because it won't it doesn't seem to stay down on its own. And this can definitely protect the ribbon cable from future damage from whoever tried to uh, move it. Now tape again, uh, double side, I mean, double layer. Tip it down more. Okay, so I'll consider this repair finished. All buttons are working. Click, click, power button. Hold button, oh, let me go see, let me show you the underside. So this is the whole button. Okay, you can move it. Click it. Click it. I think there's something on here to protect it, but it's missing from the customer. So I'm using tape in this case. And you have the on and off volume button. And that's it. Repair is finished. You can clean out the mess. And oh, I didn't put this on. Like a little. Uh, EMT shell for the camera, you don't need it. Uh, it's just extra step in a way, you can pretty much do this out. This again is also it's just a silicone 
protector for the camera. I don't see the necessity for it aside from making everything unnecessarily difficult. So you can leave it without it. The important thing is to get your iPad back to work. And if you like this repair video, put a thumbs up. And you can buy the same repair part from cyberdogllc.com. As I understand, it's quite hard and difficult to come by with these um, power volume and hot button ribbon cable for iPad 2, the new um, the new model, as you can see. These are the new model iPad 2, as you can, uh, after 2012. It has a funny ribbon cable here. It's different from the first generation iPad 2. Okay, thank you for watching. This will comp complete our repair for today. The power home button and home button, sorry, power button, home button, and volume button for the 2012 new iPad 2 model repair. Thank you for watching. Again, visit us at cyberdogllc.com and you can purchase either this cable directly from us or you can purchase the repair so I will do the similar repair here for you at our website cyberdogilc.com thank you